So if you're into nature photography just like me and are looking to buy this lens to your kit, this video is for you. So in this review of the Tamron 70 to 180 2.8 lens, I'm gonna share my first impressions on the lens, as well as size, image quality, autofocus, and other factors you might wanna know before making a purchase. This is not sponsored, and I bought this lens myself. So most other reviews on this lens are focusing on portrait photography, which is not that strange since it's considered a portrait lens, but that is not what this channel is about. So Tamron decided to go with 180 mm instead of 200 like on a regular 70 to 200 lens, which made it possible to reduce the weight a bit. And that's actually the reason I bought this lens. So the lens is 149 mm long without the lens hood, which is how you travel with it, and weights in at 810 grams. And that is this lens biggest advantage in my opinion. And 70 to 180 millimeters is such a powerful focal range to have in your kit. And being able to actually bring the lens instead of having it on your shelf at home because you have tons of other stuff to carry makes this a must have in my opinion. So they brought the same design as the other lenses in this lineup. The plastic sleek design. And I think the lens feels kind of see me premium it's not a cheap plastic it feels pretty robust even though it's made of plastic the only like switch we have is the lock button which locks the lens if you're carrying it around at 70 millimeters and, and i like that the zoom ring is smoother than it is on the the other tamron lenses in the series like the 17 to 28 and the 28 to 75 and i feel the focus ring has about the same resistance and i like the resistance on it it's really smooth, so you can really do some precise manual work if you want to. And the lens has a 67 millimeter filter thread, which means that it's the same as the other lenses in the series. You can use the same kind of filters you would on all these three lenses. So I have a 77 millimeter ND filter with a step up ring that I can use on all my lenses. And I'm happy with that solution, how it works. Uh, so I can recommend that if you're looking to buy an ND fit or something, get one for your biggest lens and then step up rings. Then you can use the same filter for, for all lenses. Gotta save those money. And the metal lens mount has a rubber gasket, which is good for preventing moisture and stuff to get inside to the sensor. However, the lens extends while zooming, which means dust particles could get sucked in over time and get inside the lens. I actually had that problem on my Tamron 28 to 75 lens. And it's not fun having dust inside the lens. So I guess we'll see over time how it handles that part. Since I most of the time shoot at 500 or 600 millimeters when I'm out, 180 feels kind of short, but it's because it's not 600 and it's not trying to be 600. But this is obviously not a replacement for a 600 lens. It's a great supplement to the kit when you know you're gonna be close up to wildlife or insects, or when you need that extra bit of light coming in thanks to the 2.8 aperture. The extra 20 millimeter you get on a regular 70 to 200 lens is not worth the extra heavy price tag in my opinion. So it, and if you're a wildlife photographer, you're probably not buying this lens for the extra reach anyway. Let's talk about autofocus. I tried photographing some birds and I find the autofocus incredibly fast. It's really cool to see that in a lens like this. Tamron says that this is their fastest autofocus lens yet. And I can definitely feel that when using it. So the bird eye autofocus works really good. It's super snappy and like nine out of 10 photos are sharp, which is really, really good for lens. However, I have still have the same problem that I need to use some manual focus sometimes when it's a lot of branches and stuff to make the camera find focus. That's more on the camera software than it is on the actual lens. So I'm not blaming you, Tamron. I'm blaming the Sony a7 IV here. I think this is a really good lens to have with you 
if you know you're gonna be close to wildlife. And photographing birds in flight is not typically what I would do with this lens because I have a 500 millimeter or the 200 to 600 just for that. But I see this as a great lens. If I need to carry some kind of telephoto lens, maybe I'm with my family and stuff and I don't can't bring this big 500 lens. This is a great, great lens to have with me. So a perfect like run and gunner, I think. Something I find really impressive with this lens is the almost macro features you have when shooting. Something I find really impressive about this lens is the almost macro features you get with it. Shooting at 70 millimeters, the shortest focus distance is 27 centimeters. You can get really creative with this. If you have some mushrooms or something in the forest, or maybe a pine cone or something. You can get really close and get some really beautiful blurred out backgrounds and almost like a macro feature. And that is really cool to have in the same lens as you can shoot flying birds with. It's such a versatile lens. However, you need to dial in 27 centimeters manually. You can't use autofocus to get that close, but it's not a problem for me because most of the times when I'm shooting something like that, I have a tripod and can easily just manual focus. I don't see it as a problem, but maybe some of you do. So this lens produces tack sharp images at this price tag. I didn't really expect it to be that sharp at 2.8. And I find it incredibly sharp, both at 70 and in between 70 and 180. However, it could be sharper in the corners at 180 millimeters in, in the center of the photo, it's tack sharp. And I find the lens handling chromatic aberration really well. And that's usually something you don't get on cheaper lenses because this is considered a cheaper lens if you compare it to the sony ones we need more competition come on sigma we need it but of course in some extreme situations there's chromatic aberration but it's pretty easy to get rid of in post we do have some vignetting going on at 70 and 180 millimeters. Personally, I don't see it as a problem because it's really easy to fix. And most of the times I actually add vignetting to my photos and posts. I think it handles flaring and shooting against the sun pretty well. I've seen better, but most of the times definitely usable. So this lens produces beautiful out of focus backgrounds because of the rounded nine blade aperture of 2.8 beautiful great great impressive beautiful great must have it but what about the negative stuff this is a great lens but it's not a perfect lens on these 70 to 200 lenses from sony you have a tripod foot which means that you can use the lens on a gimbal head which i use most of the times when i'm outside i think they chose this way because the lens is not that heavy so having it on a tripod like the traditional way is not a problem i would like to see a tripod foot because like I said, I'm using a gimbal head quite a lot and I kind of like to handle the camera that way more than having the tripod played on the camera. For the next generation, do that, Tamron. And the second negative thing is that the lens doesn't have image stabilization. For photos, this is not an issue. So thanks to the 2.8 aperture, you're not really in need of a stabilization because you're using such high shutter speeds anyway. But a stabilization in video could be really beneficial. But most Sony cameras have inbuilt stabilization and I think that does the job very good but it would be nice to have it in the lens as well, especially when filming. And one thing to have in mind as well, if you're choosing between the 70 to 200 and the Tamron, you can use teleconverters, which you cannot do on the Tamron. If you're looking to spend the money on one lens and like planning to use a teleconverter, the Sony is the way to go. So can I recommend this to you as a nature and wildlife photographer? Definitely yes. As I said earlier, this is a great supplement to the kit. But if you recently got a camera and are looking to get your first lens for wildlife photography, I would say spending $1,100 on a lens like this is not the right choice in my opinion. I I'd go with a 100 to 600 millimeter lens instead to get the extra reach because most of the times this is not enough because you can go close to wildlife and you should never go close to wildlife and especially some animals are very very important to not get close to so if you're a starter i definitely recommend to get a 600 millimeter lens instead you can probably get a used lens 
for cheaper than this one. If you already have your super telephoto lens and looking for a great supplement for those times, when you are close and can be close to an animal, this is a great lens for that. And, and the fact that you can actually fit it in your bag with all your other stuff that you need to bring makes it a lens worth purchasing in my opinion. I will probably make a more in-depth long-term review of this lens when I've used it a bit more. If you will reach this far into the video, thank you so much. And if you aren't subscribing to the channel, please do. I see in the analytics that many people come back to the videos, but they're not subscribing. So if you're one of those, cheers to you, cheers to this lens and have a great freaking day because you deserve it. Goodbye. I'll see you in the next video.